A reminder of this morning's Gospel, which is from John. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. And one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to Jesus, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now, there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus realised that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king. He withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, got into a boat and started across the lake to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The lake became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the lake and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. I wonder, when was the last time that you really felt a sense of helplessness, a sense of hopelessness? When was the last time that you felt totally overwhelmed by something? A time when all you could think of uh, was that there was nothing, nothing that you could do. This situation is just simply too big. Well, if you're anything like me, and I guess that you are because you're human too, just like I am, uh, when faced with these moments, I often feel the urge to run away, to hide from whatever it is that's causing me to feel helpless and hopeless and inadequate. I find myself wanting to be alone, to have time to reflect, to take stock, to reevaluate, and you know, maybe, maybe try to see a way through. I look for a time of stillness, often in a place where people can't bother me. Well, I wonder, is that you? Is this description something that suits or matches your feelings too? If it is, then imagine that the quiet that you craved was immediately invaded by hundreds and hundreds of people. Say you found a, you know, a nice little church somewhere and you simply wanted time to sit and to pray, to be by yourself in silence. But shortly after you'd arrived, people start turning up because there's some kind of event on and soon the church is filled with a mood that's the complete opposite of yours. Or say you go for a walk down by the Barwon, uh, the beautiful river that we have here. Um, you find a solitary spot to sit in 
and to comp contemplate, only to find that on the very day uh, that you've uh, chosen to go down there to comp contemplate, you find that there's a fun run taking place or something like that where people and dogs are running all around the place in both directions. I wonder how would you react to that? I know how I would react to that and well I'm in church so I can't, uh, can't possibly tell you how I might react to that. It'd be easy to imagine that Jesus too would react just like you and I would in whatever way we're imagining we might react in a situation like that. It'd be easy to think that he too would have found all these people's presence irritating, to say the least. We hear on a number of occasions in the Gospels of Jesus wanting to have some downtime, time for himself, time for just him and sometimes him and his disciples. Yet when he slips away to be quiet and alone, the crowds discover where he is and they turn up in their thousands. But notice that his reaction isn't anger or frustration. You don't believe there's anywhere in the Gospels where he's interrupted when he's in prayer or when he's by himself, where he's acted out in anger. But rather, what Jesus displays is compassion. It happens again in this morning's Gospel when Jesus sees that the crowd are in need of food during a time where he's taken himself away for some quiet. His immediate instinct isn't to run away from them and hide from them like you and I might do, ignoring their need. His instinct is to do something for them. And as we hear in the Gospel very soon, everyone will witness the outward and visible works of his compassion and his incredible power as um, he displays this unconditional love that he has for everyone as his unconditional love is made manifest as he transforms his compassion and his love for those in need into action. But notice what happens before Jesus performs this great, great miracle. He doesn't just conjure up food out of nothing. Jesus waits. He waits for a response. He waits for a response from his disciples. Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He asks Philip. And Philip's reaction is perhaps predictable. Um, apart from the fact that they're up a mountain, um, they're far away from houses or from any shops. And there are thousands of people here. How could we possibly afford to buy enough for everyone is effectively and not surprisingly Philip's response. In Philip's mind the situation is hopeless. What could they possibly do? And this is a situation that we too often find ourselves in. Me? I protest if Jesus had asked me that question, me? You know, what can I do? I can't do anything. I haven't got enough money, I haven't got enough ability, I haven't got enough time, I haven't uh, got what it takes to arrange for food for all these people. You know, this is a hopeless, hopeless situation, Jesus. And it's all too familiar a response for all of us when we're faced with so much need in our world that things are just too big and often they really do feel far too big for little me or little you to have any impact whatsoever it often feels like this in parish ministry too um, those who are on parish council or those of you who have served on parish councils in the past might know how difficult it can be um, to know how to tackle some of the big issues that we face with so little by way of personal resources and financial resources. So we feel often hopeless, overwhelmed 
inadequate and empty with little to offer. But you know, we can all learn something from today's gospel and it's simply this, that if we are prepared to give to Jesus just a little of what we're able to do, inadequate though that may seem, then truly amazing things can happen. This is what happens in the story of the feeding of the 5,000 that we've heard in our gospel. From out of hopelessness, from out of helplessness and inadequacy, they only had five barley loaves, remember, and two fish. Jesus takes what is given to him and he transforms it into something greater. And you know, this is so important for us to recognise and to acknowledge as Christians, as people of faith. Um, we naturally care. We often find ourselves to be full of compassion. But in some situations, we just don't know what to do. Sometimes our feelings of compassion and Remember uh, what we heard in last week's gospel about compassion, that compassion is that gut-wrenching uh, desire to stand alongside uh, the one who is suffering and to literally take on the suffering of those who are in need. Sometimes those genuine and very real feelings of compassion end up draining away to nothing as we become overwhelmed by the scale of the suffering, by the scale of the hopelessness and that drains away and we end up doing nothing. I know this is the case because it happens to me. Today's Gospel flies in the face of all of that. Today's Gospel teaches us that Jesus is prepared to take our thoughts and our ideas. He's prepared to take the equivalent of our loaves and our fishes, our money, our sense of humour, our time, our enthusiasm, energy and talents, or lack of those things. He's prepared to take our love. He's prepared to take our meagre, artistic uh, gifts, our lack of skill. Uh, and our lack of skill with words, whatever it is that we might be able to offer him, no matter how small or how inadequate, Jesus is prepared to take them from us. And once we give them to him, a little bit like we heard in the gospel today, he was given those loaves and fishes, nothing really, he transforms them before returning them back to us uh, to give to those who need them. And you know, this really is what Christian service is all about. Christian ministry is all about. It's not about me doing everything. It's not about you doing everything. It's not about me or you doing everything uh, that we think needs to be done to help those who are in need. Christian ministry isn't concerned whether you or me as individuals can solve problems and alleviate uh, other people's troubles or sufferings because whatever we eventually end up giving isn't actually just ours to give rather it's something greater than you and it's something greater than me it's something very different something more powerful and something more mysterious than you and I could ever give. You see, the thing we end up giving becomes transformed, transformed to the point that whatever we give, we end up looking on it as amazing. Uh, you know, never mind anyone who, uh, what anyone else might think uh, about it, we look upon it uh, and we look upon it with great amazement as we see what God has done with the, the bits and pieces that we dug out of our meagre resources to offer to him. Think of a time when you've been 
a part of something that you've really been caught out by the results or when you've been caught out by the impact uh, of what you did, um, an impact that far exceeded your expectations, that achieved something that you thought was impossible, but nevertheless, it was achieved. If you've experienced that, or even if you've just experienced a hint of that, then you've been close to Jesus and you've caught a glimpse of what he's doing in your life and in our world. Just as the disciples witnessed uh, and all the people that received that food witnessed in that gospel story today. And just as all those who um, hunger in today's world, hunger for whatever it is that they might be hungry for, will be satisfied too by the work uh, that is carried out by little old people like you and me. Jesus continues to do this still, still to this day, never mind the, the history uh, of that uh, gospel reading. Uh, I frequently say in my sermons that, you know, it's not a history lesson. It's not something that we look at in the past uh, with great interest. It comes forward to the here and now whenever we hear the gospel read so that it has life today. Jesus continues to still do this today, but he does it through the likes of you and me. So let's be open to his power to share his compassion and to give him what we have, no matter how small we feel that might be, so that it can be used in his service for the benefit of others in our world today. Amen.